Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. In yesterday's video, I talked about quality bonsai trees and all the elements that make up a quality bonsai tree. And then I'm going to try and apply that theory to my very first bonsai, my ficus microcarpa, that I started from a seed about uh, 28 years ago. When you're growing bonsai, you're always trying to attain perfection, which is unachievable, but you're always trying to make your tree look better and better every year. And when this tree was 20 years old, uh, so not too long ago, I took a major risk with this tree. I uh, did some severe root pruning. And that was, you know, in the pursuit of perfection. I wasn't happy with the root base on it, and I knew I could make a better root base on the tree. So I'll show you a clip of what I did to the tree when it was 20 years old. And I wondered, well, is it going to survive to see its 21st birthday or not? So we're going to make our line. We've got this tree out. And we're working on cutting through this part. Okay, we're just about cut through here. We're just uh, in a final trim. And... Okay, there's that part of the tree removed. You can see our woody cuts. Um, those will heal over. We want to keep them a little drier when it's in the pot and keep the humidity up. So we can take that tree out and we're going to try and remove this one also, which is kind of tangled in there, but we'll get it out. And we'll see what we have left. There it goes. Okay, there's that tree out. And here's what's left of our original tree. With this tree, because it's a, a nice smooth trunk transitioning up into the branches, we don't want a gnarly root base. We want it clean and smooth. So what we want to do is get rid of any roots that aren't you know, going to make a smooth transition into the ground. So these, one, this one at the side here, we, we want to cut that off so it's going to blend into the soil nicely. There we go. Like that. And then some of these back ones, they're a little long. So here's our soil line. We want to cut them off. And the big one, I think we'll have to use the saw for that. Okay, we've, uh, we've trimmed the roots now. So they're pretty flat and simple. Uh, we do have a great big root at the back here. And that will be removed someday uh, when we get our feeder roots growing again. So we're going to leave that for now. And uh, that's about it. We're going to plant it now. Shift it over a bit. Yeah. The center of my pot is about there. Yeah, that looks good. That's about the right position. And yeah, we're about on the center. And you can see the tree is, it sits up by itself. So it's. You know, even though it doesn't have a lot of roots, it's fairly stable in the pot because it does have the flat bottom. So here we are. Major surgery on my very first bonsai tree. That was a look at a fairly severe root pruning operation. Uh, very risky, uh, but you know, I did it at the right time of the year. I took good aftercare of the tree. The tree was vigorous when I did that root pruning. So it did live and it saw its 21st birthday. I was quite relieved. Um, there were a lot of comments on, under the video. You just killed the tree, you ruined the tree, you ruined the root base, it looks horrible now. And well, you know, I was pruning it for the future. And today we're going to be tackling the canopy on this tree and probably doing some quite severe pruning. 
Again, setting the tree up for the future. Always trying to achieve that perfection in a bonsai. And for me, that's kind of a miniaturized look to the tree. So this tree, even though it's small, I hope it conveys the feeling of a giant, giant ficus tree growing in the Amazon rainforest. Over the next few videos, I'll be doing a lot of work on this tree. Today's video, I'll be defoliating the top of the tree, starting to prune up the branches. Eventually, I'll get to repotting the tree. You can see it's kind of lifting high out of the pot. So it's, you know, getting a lot of root mass in the pot and it's actually raising the tree up. I'll show you that. Here's a look at the soil level around the lip of the pot and you can see it's, it's pushed up quite high. That means there's a lot of roots in the pot. Around the back of the tree, you can see it's also quite lifted out of the pot. There's a look at the level of the moss versus the lip of the pot and it's raised, you know, a fair amount. Before I start the defoliation work on the tree, I'll explain, you know, what state the branches are in and where I want to get them for the future. Yesterday I was talking about some of the elements that make up a quality tree. So today we'll be dealing with branches. When you're growing a branch on a tree, you have your trunk and you have the start of your branch. And your branch will grow out nice and straight, you know, with a few leaves on it. And, you know, if you prune it here, a little subdivide, it'll grow out nice and straight again. Get some more leaves on it. And you prune it again, it'll grow out nice and straight again. Subdivide. And you'll end up with this long, skinny branch that has, you know, ramification, but there's no change in taper. So it's it's very skinny at the start of the trunk and it's very skinny at the end. So you know, it doesn't matter if you're using clip and grow or wiring, eventually you've got to prune that branch off and then, you know, get back budding and start developing it. So your branch eventually will get taper to it. So this will have thickened up and then you get new branches that'll be skinnier and then they'll subdivide again. And, you know, slowly, you know, you build up by clip and grow, you'll, you'll build up taper in your branches. And that's what makes a branch look really good is, you know, that difference in taper from the starting thickness to your fine growing tips, which are, you know, very slim. So you want a branch, you know, that has movement and taper as it grows out towards the edges of your canopy. So at the profile of your canopy, you want these growing tips to be very fine, you know, delicate new growth. And as you go back on the branch, it's got to look older and it's got to be thicker. You know, it's got to have bark on it and the bark gets less and less as you go towards the tip. So it's got to go from The branch has to go from, you know, fairly simple at the base, you know, a nice flowing kind of structure, and then you get build ramification as you go out towards the tips. So it becomes complex, more and more complex. Your inner nodes between branches, you know, the first division might be this, this long, and then your second division shorter. And then third is even shorter, fourth, fifth, you know, it gets tighter and tighter as you get towards the tips. And that's how a, a tree grows in nature. Uh, all the light comes in on the outer part of the canopy. So that's where you get all your fine growth. And, you know, a tree is limited, as I said, it, both in size and spread. You know, you don't see trees growing huge canopies that extend out forever. And you also don't see them growing, you know, as high as a skyscraper. Uh, there's a limit to how much resources the tree can get from the roots and the soil. 
up into the canopy. So uh, this is a, a tree in the ground. So yeah, so this is kind of what we're after. We're not after, you know, long, thin, skinny branches. We want them to have taper and movement. And that gives a branch good character and refinement. On my ficus tree, I have a lot of branches that kind of come up and they kind of subdivide a lot. Um, and then, you know, there is some good, there's some good stuff happening on them. And then there's a lot of sections that maybe have movement from pruning, but then they kind of extend quite far. And some don't have a lot of movement. So they start off quite nice. And then there's a section on them, you know, where it's been grown, grown out to increase the size of it where there's not much taper, there's not much character to these branches. They're kind of long and straight with no taper, not much movement, not much ramification. So basically what I've got to do is if this is the outer profile of the canopy now, I've got to bring it back. I've got to bring the whole, the whole branch structure back. So I end up with, you know, this section of the branches removed. So I'm bringing it back to here and then from these branches, I'll then grow my new slimmer shoots, probably all over. And then I'll keep the process going. So, you know, you prune them again, prune them again, and so on. So, you know, instead of this profile being way out here, I'm bringing it back and building my branch structure again. And this is something you may have to repeat over many years. Um, after this operation, you know, these will eventually grow out again to the old profile. And, you know, you have two choices. You can either keep making your tree larger or after this grows, then you've got to prune it all back again. These will all thickened up by then. And then you again start your finer branch again once more. Sometimes as you're pruning you may have to take off a thick branch and start it again from a little tiny shoot and eventually you know as that grows over the next 10-20 years you'll be cutting this one off. Cutting off this one so there's always so this starts it off again. So you keep your tree to a certain size, always keeping, you know, your growing tips very slender. And this will just keep getting thicker at the base here. So you'll get that massive taper from T1, your thickness here, to out here, which is your T2. So that difference in thickness is what makes a branch look fantastic. It just gives it all that character. It makes the tree look powerful because you get that change of thickness. You get all this ramification, uh, the old bark, uh, the movement. It, it just, the branch becomes old and yet you're keeping it to a compact size. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, pruning this canopy back possibly quite severely. When I look back, I ask myself, you know, why did I risk losing a 20 year old tree that I grew from seed, my very first bonsai? And this is the reason to get a root system like this. It was a big chance, but it paid off. It, uh, it's a root system now that, you know, I can develop into the future. It's got a really good start. I'm hoping that after today, after I get all these branches pruned up, I'll also be you know, happy with the uh, branch structure I'm left with. And it's something I can build on in the future to improve the quality of this bonsai. I'm going to begin the defoliation process now. So here I go. I'll just be removing every leaf on the tree. And why am I doing this? Well, it's so I can see the branch structure clearly. 
Right now, all the leaves are in the way and you can't really get a good look at what's going on. So this will allow me to view all the branches while the tree's naked. I'm pruning the leaves about halfway through the leaf petiole, the leaf stem, leaving a little stub. You can see the tree is really healthy. There's all kinds of white sap pumping up through the wounds. So it's full of vigor, this tree, and it's ready to grow. So that's why after all that cold storage, I'm going to do all this repotting, top pruning, because the tree is just full of vigor. And it should recover fairly quickly from all this. Growing a tropical tree in Canada is a slow process because, you know, we only get three, three and a half, maybe four months of summer where the trees are outside and then they have to come into the house. And so they just start growing well in the summer and then it's time to bring them back in. So, you know, growing a tropical tree in a cold climate is a slower process than if you were growing it in the tropics. It's still a little skinny, the trunk, but I think in another 10 years, you'll see this tree will look dramatically different. The trunk will have thickened up. All these aerial roots will have thickened up. It'll be, uh, you know, the canopy will get wider. It'll be a powerful looking tree someday. Here's a close up where you can see the milky white sap coming out from all the cut points. Uh, some people have skin allergies to this latex, so you might want to wear gloves when you're doing this pruning operation. I've never noticed any effect in my hands, so I think I'm okay. I'm sure in a commercial greenhouse, they would just rip all these leaves off by hand. You know, just grab the branch and strip it. But I'm trying to be very careful with my tree. It is my baby after all. There goes the snow plow again. Boy, oh boy. It's nice to do this tree on a turntable. And if you have a spinning tree custom bonsai turntable, it's even better. <laughs> As I'm defoliating the tree, I'm also inspecting it, looking for any insect problems. And so far I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any scale insects. I haven't seen any aphids or any problems at all. So that's really good that the tree is looking really healthy. As you're defoliating the tree, you'll notice you'll get a gummy, sappy buildup on your scissors. So I just spray it with a bit of water and it, it rubs right off. That keeps your scissors cutting nice and sharp. I'll work away defoliating the tree and we'll come back and hopefully it'll still be light out. I'm getting down to the final stages of defoliation. I just have the top of the tree to go and then we'll stand back and have a look at it all. I'm down to the final branch to defoliate. So here I go. And then we'll take a tour of the tree structure. This will be very exciting to see what's developing on the tree and maybe give us some ideas. Last leaf coming off. Done. Here's a look at the floor. A lot of leaves taken off. If you can imagine all the surface area of all those leaves put together, that's a lot. All right, we'll go in and have a look at the tree now. So you can see a lot of the growth is shooting upwards. Uh, probably too vertical. We want the canopy to be kind of spreading and there's more growth at the center of the tree where it's vigorous and it's a little lighter at the edges. So I'll have to even that up when I'm pruning it. I left this really strong root on before. I debated taking it off, um, but I'm glad I did leave it on because it counteracts these thick roots over to this side. And I think it, it gives the tree a lot of strength. It just you know, when it drops aerial roots, it just creates this strength of the tree so it looks like it would never tip over in a storm. It just makes the tree look solid to me. Uh, so that's a feature on the tree. Uh, I didn't plan for it. it. It just grew that way. And this rear branch here, 
it, it's kind of it's kind of parallel with the branch in front of it but I didn't plan on that either originally this back branch was growing out here and for some reason this part of it died off and it grew a strong shoot out to the side and then dropped an aerial root you know I uh, in bonsai I try and work with the tree so you know maybe I don't know what percentage but you know the tree has a natural growth pattern it decides where it wants to grow in that and I kind of I kind of guide it and work with the tree so it decided it wanted that branch here and this is big thick root so I I left it I think it's a feature on the tree that you know if it wasn't there well maybe the tree would look too ordinary it uh, I like it there anyway um, there's also a cool root coming from way up here it was up near the apex an aerial root and it dropped down then it wrapped around this branch and it followed very closely to the trunk it grew along kind of the wet surface of the trunk and they wrap around and again you know looking from the front view you get these roots that kind of wrap around and cross and maybe not traditional in the radial root base but a feature on the tree when you get roots that grow alongside the trunk like that I think it's it's pretty cool and I keep them you know they're not aerial roots that shoot out of the trunk and then bend down into the soil they're a, a nice desirable kind of root and again you know I want the tree to look like have some naturalness to it I don't want it to look like a a tree I designed I want it to look like something that would grow in nature so up top I've got I have you know this is my original apex it kind of goes into multi upright branches or trunks and then I have another thicker one developing at the back which is quite interesting that's the one that has that aerial root dropping off it I did prune it back you can see a, a stump or a prune mark there where I pruned it back it was gaining all kinds of vigor so I had to cut back the vigor on that one it was just taking over and you can see this big thick root is feeding this branch and the branch is thickening up you know it's thicker here than it is back here which is fine that's how a ficus grows and this will eventually kind of become almost a secondary tree back there you can see the vigor in everything being fed by that thick root you know it's just vigorous so that'll be incorporated or that'll be integrated into the styling of the tree that this section here will be almost its own tree back here so you know you've got to turn these things into features sometimes uh, everything else you know other than it needs repotting and that which we'll do everything else is looking fairly good there's uh, a lot of good branches but again you know they're they're too whippy so here's a good example and this branch may not stay here because it's two branches growing from one spot but it starts out fairly thin and it's thin the whole branch is thin there's no movement no ramification so you know it's either got to be removed or cut back hard uh, a lot of these branches are very whippy they're long and skinny and slender so the whole tree's got to be br brought back in size so it'll be uh yeah a lot of major pruning and a lot of styling decisions coming up you know to, to deal with that vigorous section fed by that aerial root how to plan the canopy on that how am I going to integrate it with the overall design of the tree and things like that so it's going to be really fun um, I'm really excited about getting this tree pruned up I think it's going to really take this tree to the next level for the future I'm going to try and keep the videos a little shorter yesterday's video was an hour and that's that's getting up there uh, so I'm going to tackle the pruning tomorrow so this will be all for today I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>